October 1997. Thrust SSC attempts to set a new land speed record at Black Rock Desert in Nevada. The British-built machine becomes the first car to officially break the sound barrier, averaging 763 miles per hour over two flying miles, and setting a world record which still stands to this day. Back in Britain, a project is currently underway that aims to smash that record. The Bloodhound supersonic car is a jet and rocket-powered vehicle which has been designed to break the 1,000 miles per hour barrier. It's an extreme technological challenge. At 1,000 miles per hour, Bloodhound will cover one mile every 3.6 seconds. That's faster than a bullet from a gun. And to reach that speed, it needs 135,000 horsepower, six times that of all the Formula One cars on the starting grid put together. Based in Bristol, the Bloodhound project was launched in 2008 as a global education initiative to spur interest in science and technology. It's now being followed online by over 2 million people in around 200 countries. Bloodhound's chief engineer is Mark Chapman. Why it's a great project to be working on is there is no right answer. There isn't a book. You can't look across and see how McLaren or Red Bull or Boeing or Airbus are doing things. We are completely unique. And the problems that we keep finding are unique to the car and unique to the, e the effort that we're trying to put into it. The design team consists of some of the world's most revered engineering talent, with individuals hand-picked to ensure the project achieves its goals. In order to reach 1,000 miles an hour, Bloodhound requires an eclectic mix of power sources. We actually have to have three engines on this car. So we've got a Eurofighter Typhoon jet engine. With that on its own, we can get to around about 700 miles an hour, so almost supersonic. We also have a rocket engine. We have a um, Falcon hybrid rocket engine, and that gives us another real push that we start using at 350 miles an hour. It takes up to 1,000. But as well as that, we need a fuel pump or a, a motor to pump the fuel pump for the oxidizer for that rocket. And for that, we have um, a Cosworth Formula One engine. So the smallest engine on our car is an 800 horsepower Formula One engine that we use to drive the peroxide into the rocket. Last October, the first high powered firing of the rocket system took place. With the engineering team, invited guests and the world's media looking on via video link, the motor burned for 10 seconds inside a reinforced shelter. It created one of the loudest man-made noises on the planet. The test proved successful and represented a key milestone in the development of the world's first 1,000 miles per hour car. Bloodhound is a mix of car and aircraft technology. The rear section, which houses the jet engine, has a metallic framework and panels like an aircraft. The front third of the car, where the driver will sit, is made of carbon fiber and is a single shell or monocoque design like a Formula One car. It's been built by URT Composites, who work with clients in a number of different industry sectors, including motorsport, where they've established close links with some of Formula One's leading teams. The company's technical director is Kevin Emmett. It's the same sort of technologies, really. Obviously, we're, we're using a composite material that the, the F1 guys use. Uh, for lightweight and stiffness um, and this car needs to be fairly light. It's going to be about seven and a half tonnes when it's fully fully fueled. The weight difference for this vehicle in a composite over a metallic version is somewhere in the region of probably 75% lighter. The monocoque is built in two halves and the joining process involves it being wrapped with a breather material before being vacuum packed in a suitably large plastic bag. It's then baked for several hours in an autoclave, which acts like a giant pressure cooker and seals the join. The record attempt will take place at Hackskeen Pan, a 12-mile stretch of dry lake bed in South Africa's Northern Cape. In order to prepare the track, 6,000 tons of stones have had to be removed. 
And as there's no mechanical way of doing this without damaging the surface, it's all had to be done by hand. To break the land speed record, the car must make two runs in opposite directions, where it's timed over a flying mile. A maximum of one hour is allowed between each run, and it's the job of operating procedures engineer Annie Beresford to make sure everything runs to schedule. Historically, the turnaround um, was set at 60 minutes, and it was very, very easy to do. You top it up with a little bit of fuel, check the tyres, make sure all was good, probably have a fag, turn around the car and head off in the other direction. Um, Bloodhound is actually very, very complex in what we have to do during that 60 minutes, and so it's extremely challenging for us. We have to fuel the jet, which is around 500 litres of Jet A fuel. We have to re-fuel um, the rocket, which is around 1,000 litres of oxidizer HTP. Uh, we also have to keep the car cool during that turnaround, as well as checking all the systems. And we also have an extremely complex engine in terms of the Cosworth Formula One engine that's on board, which acts as just the pump to pump the rocket fuel through into the rocket. So a lot to do in a very, very short space of time. Bloodhound will be driven by Andy Green. A former fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force, Green set the existing record of 763 miles an hour that stood for almost 16 years. Despite his huge experience, there's no getting away from the inherent dangers of his role. The best thing we can do is we need to stop Andy having an accident in the first place. But if he, something were to happen, he needs to stay in the car. It's the safest place for him to be but it is dangerous. There are things that we cannot, the energies at 1,000 miles an hour are, are huge, terrific energy. So we have to very much work through all the issues that we may have and try and design those out now. Five years after its launch, the project is on track to achieve its technological and educational goals, inspiring a new generation of engineers through its land speed record attempt. If all goes to plan, Bloodhound will eclipse the current mark later this year before returning to South Africa in 2014 to break the 1,000 miles per hour barrier. Beating the record isn't an issue. I've got no doubts whatsoever that we'll, we'll break the existing record. The car is definitely capable of 1,000 miles an hour. However, we may find something out as we go through 800, 900, increasing the speed that prevents us from getting there. People sort of say, would that be a failure? No, if, if we've, we are generally push, pushing the boundaries of physics, science, knowledge, and if we run into something, we're being very open, we'll tell the world what we're doing. But at the moment, we're confident the car will get to 1,000 miles an hour.